You know, what's interesting is that few issues bring everybody together, like the, uh, the issue of liquor store privatization. You know, Republicans, Democrats, liberals and conservatives want more convenient ways to buy their wine and spirits like they can in virtually any state in the United States. Uh, we know that when we travel, it's not as complicated as, is, as it is in PA. Um, you know, so I'm a, I'm a strong supporter of, of changing the system we have, uh, but I need to uh, certainly review the exact details of the proposal to make sure uh, that, you know, the money is being spent correctly, that the education block grant, if that's the final place that the money will be spent from the proceeds, that it is set up correctly and not something that's just going to turn into money being wasted at the local level. Uh, and lastly, I think that we need to make sure that it's not done piecemeal and it's done in a way that small businesses, the mom and pop shops, can compete, given the opportunity to compete. And they don't just get forced out by, by the larger box stores. Um, but regardless, uh, the people of uh, Pennsylvania can, can rely on me to stand with them, the consumer, on this issue rather than the special interest groups that just kind of seem to control this debate every single time it comes up. Right now, I know that in, in, in the fact is that in many rural areas in Pennsylvania, for instance, Adams County, I believe they have one wine and spirits store. Well, surely there's going to be more than one wine and spirits uh, retail location after privatization. If the market's there, people will purchase the licenses, they will invest in the businesses, uh, and they will provide for availability. Uh, I've also I've also seen that as part of the proposal, they will make sure that there is availability, whether it's by keeping the existing public structure there until there's a private uh, retailer to come in and, and sell the wine and spirits.